This video and every video on this channel is made possible by your support on patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. I couldn't do this without you and your contributions keep this channel alive. You can also grab an official shirt over on prowrestlingtees.com slash 616 entertainment. For as deep a roster and as story to history as DC Comics has, it's a wonder why there aren't more great video games released under this banner. And don't get me wrong, there are some truly fantastic titles featuring these heroes and villains. Batman Arkham Asylum changed superhero video games forever upon its 2009 release on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Injustice Gods Among Us and Injustice 2 are top tier when it comes to the fighting genre. DC Universe Online is an MMO with over 10 years of history running through its veins, and this heart is still beating. Check out my retrospective on DC Universe right after this. And there are more hits, sure, but we're not here to list off the great DC games from top to bottom. We're here today to focus on one of the DC games that has been largely forgotten, a title left in the past. Justice League Heroes, released in November of 2006 on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, drops players into the shoes of the greatest heroes DC Comics has to offer. Batman, Wonder Woman, Zatanna, Superman, The Flash, Green Lantern, and more battle it out with the forces of evil. Brainiac, Queen Bee, Doomsday, Gorilla Grodd, Darkseid, the list goes on and on. The question is this. With an all-star cast of characters, coming from a developer with a great track record, why in the hell is Justice League Heroes not remembered more fondly? In a world of endless remasters, remakes, and sequels, how was this game forgotten so quickly? We're gonna get to the bottom of it right now. What's up Dan Dans? My name is Ian, thank you for joining me here today. If this is your first time on this channel, you should know these sort of retrospectives are my specialty and I've covered everything from God of War to Halloween to Resident Evil to every wrestling game you can think of. Feel free to stick around. There's a little something for everybody. But maybe you've been around here a long time. Maybe you even support me over on Patreon.com slash 616 Entertainment. Oh, I finished this video like a month and a half ago and what I was promoting here is now out of date. Uh, so let me hit you with some other news. In the meantime, I am going to do a full retrospective on Superman the Movie from 1978. That will be the next episode of Superman for Everyone, and you can look forward to a release date for that at the end of this video. How's that for a hook? But enough about that, let's get down to business here today. Now we can't go too far into the story and gameplay without first covering where Justice League Heroes came from. I mentioned at the top that this developer had a hell of a track record, and that was not an exaggeration. Snowblind Studios were the team responsible for the topic at hand here today, and if that name sounds familiar to you, that might be because you've played a few of their well-known games. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance hit the PlayStation 2 and Xbox in 2001 and wowed critics and consumers alike with its polished presentation and addictive gameplay. Snowblind would follow up this effort with Champions of Norath Realms of EverQuest in 2004 and Champions Return to Arms in 2005, both of which continued to earn high review scores and sell exceptionally well. All three of these titles ran on the aptly titled Snowblind engine, and wouldn't you know it, today's game operates with that very same engine under its hood. I'd like to take a quick second here to simply appreciate the box art of Justice League Heroes, alright? Look at this, this is a thing of beauty. I remember seeing this game on the shelves of my local GameStop back in the day, and while I was enamored with the design, I never owned it myself. There was always something else I'd come to the store for in particular, and back then, at 15, 16 years old, I didn't have the sort of cash to just walk in and buy two games on a whim. So I'd always pick up this box, study the cover, flip it over and look at all the details on the back, and put it down. It wasn't until I was in my late 20s that I ever experienced this one firsthand, so I don't have any stories of playing this game as a teenager, sadly. But enough about the box art, let's talk about the story, and more specifically, the man who wrote this story. 
From a bird's eye view, and don't worry, we'll go more into detail when we look at the gameplay, the game is about Darkseid gaining access to our planet through his manipulation of Brainiac and other assorted top tier villains. The Justice League must band together and tackle this threat at full strength, for this is no simple fight. The fate of the universe hangs in the balance. This story was written by three-time Eisner Award nominee Dwayne McDuffie, a man whose legacy goes far beyond his list of impressive accolades. I mean, for real, McDuffie was a lead writer on the Static Shock and Justice League television shows, as well as three different iterations of Ben 10. He wrote for Marvel, handling characters like Spider-Man, Freddy Krueger, Hellraiser, Iron Man, and more. But like I said, Dwayne McDuffie was more than just his resume. In 1993, he co-founded Milestone Media, a comic book company created by and to serve underrepresented minorities in the medium. The aforementioned Static was just one of many characters created under Milestone Media's umbrella, several of which crossed over into mainline DC Universe canon. Unfortunately, Dwayne McDuffie passed away in February 2011 after suffering complications from an emergency heart surgery. He was only 49 years old. But hey, talk about making your time count for something, right? Here's to you, Mr. McDuffie. Now how the hell does this game play, right? How does it feel to actually take control of all the different members of the Justice League? You know, there's a belief out there that it's impossible to make a good Superman game. How would you handle all of his powers? How would the world need to be crafted in order to fit him? Nobody can hurt Superman. That's bullshit. It's just bullshit. And Justice League Heroes proves that it's bullshit in the very first level. A gnarly meteor falls out of the sky, which is never good. I don't know how many movies you've seen, but in my experience, this never leads to anything good. Martian Manhunter calls Batman to check in on the situation, and once he's done dealing with these fools, it's go time. Evil robots have already occupied the meteor zone. See? What did I tell you? Superman arrives to lend a hand, and now we step into the shoes of the world's finest. What a hell of a way to begin, right? Batman and Superman in level 1? Let's do this. What I meant by this game proves the you can't handle Superman in a game theory wrong in the first level is right here. We've got heat vision. We've got freeze breath. We can fly. Oh, nobody can hurt Superman. That's not true. That's not even close to true. And I'm not just talking about kryptonite and magic. Look at the animated series. Livewire can shock the shit out of Clark and drop him. These guys in the Justice League show use their alien technology to capture and incapacitate him almost immediately. Anyone who says Superman can't be hurt or is impossible to work with, they have no idea what they're talking about. Justice League Heroes drops in verbal cues all over the place to drive this home as well. Look out! Careful Superman, those weapons are powerful enough to hurt even you. Watch out for these! If they hurt me, they can finish you! It's not hard to figure out. Alright, I'm off by Superman's soapbox now. Across the journey, we'll be switching between predetermined teams. We've got everything here from Wonder Woman and Zatanna, Flash and Green Lantern. Later on, you can put together your own team with whichever characters you choose. Heroes like Aquaman, Hawkgirl, The Huntress, and more are playable after you unlock them. How do I unlock them? You gotta keep your eyes open for these shields scattered all around the levels. These are your unlockable item currency. Yeah, this is the PlayStation 2. No microtransactions here. You wanna play as Hal Jordan or Wally West? You gotta play the game and spend the tokens you find. Remember when it was this simple? But hey, if there was a $10 charge to just have everyone unlocked from the get-go, plenty of people would buy it. And that's why microtransactions continue to exist. <sighs> anyway, each character has their own special and unique abilities. I love playing as Zatanna. First of all, she's hot, so points for that. But second of all, her magical abilities are top tier. Her healing move is a literal lifesaver in tense moments, and her fireball attack is arguably the best long distance projectile in the game. Because her magic meter can be upgraded to hell and back, meaning you can spam this thing for days. Superman's heat vision is cool and powerful, but it's slow. And if your aim is off, you wasted it. Zatanna, all day. Batman's special moves are hand-to-hand -hand combat and gadget-based, obviously. Wonder Woman's lasso can tie jabronis up or pull them in for a face-to-face ass-kicking. 
The Flash can spin up a tornado that sucks in every enemy in the surrounding area, which is highly damaging and great for creating some space. Aquaman has a similar move as well, making these guys a pretty powerful combination, if that's how you want to go. I mentioned unlockable characters a minute ago, and didn't talk about the unlockable extra costumes for the starting heroes. You bet your ass I bought the black suit for Superman. You bet your ass I bought the Earth 2 suit for Superman. I also spent a few shields on Martian Manhunter's true form, because why wouldn't you? He looks like Dan Aykroyd in Coneheads. Is that reference too dated? Justice League Heroes was clearly made for a two-player experience, but I captured all of my footage solo, and it's not a problem whatsoever. When an AI is controlling your partner, you don't have to worry about them jumping into battle unprepared or making stupid decisions. Hell, I often died before my AI buddy did, and when that happens, the game just switches you over into their shoes. Crossing a checkpoint resurrects your fallen comrades, so it's not like it's a game over if you lose a buddy in the early going, which is nice. We also have the option of switching between our two heroes at any given second by pressing up on the D-pad. Tired of controlling Green Lantern? No problem, switch over to Flash. As the levels go on, the enemies get tougher and tougher, and that's why it's important to bash as many nerds as possible. My god, I see a nerd, I'm like, I'm gonna bash some nerds right now. Well, right after this, we should probably bash nerds, because I gotta out. get it out of my system. Yeah. Taking down enemies adds to your experience, as it does with most Diablo-esque action RPGs. And powering up your health, your combat rating, and your special abilities is key to lasting more than 30 seconds when the going gets tough. This game is deeper than a run-of-the-mill beat-em-up, man. This was Snowblind Studios, after all. If you avoided this one thinking it was just a mindless button masher, you fucked up, and that's a shame. I want to take a second to talk about the roster in this game, and I don't just mean on the hero side of things. We've been through that. We've covered it up and down. I'm talking about the villains. The standard enemies, the mobs, the jobbers, the jabronis, call them what you will, they vary from robots to white martians to dark side soldiers to gorilla grods underlings. It's all over the place and they all have their own fighting styles. That's awesome, but let's talk about the big boys. Let's talk about the boss battles. Brainiac? Hell yeah, there are several different versions of Brainiac to fight, and all of these battles have their own winning conditions. Gorilla Grodd? Yes sir. Doomsday? You're damn right. And you're not gonna beat him hand to hand. You've gotta contain him and use traps to take him out. This is the monster that killed Superman. You think you're gonna beat him in a fist fight? No. Queen Bee shows up and causes all sorts of trouble, so we're gonna infiltrate her hive and kick her ass. Killer Frost gets involved and needs a beatdown. Key is here, and that is so cool because this is a super deep cut. When's the last time we saw Key used in anything notable? Brainiac isn't our final boss here, as Brainiac was being manipulated by Darkseid, which is awesome. Darkseid emerges and beats the absolute shit out of the entire Justice League by himself. And if you know anything about Darkseid, you know this is on brand. Darkseid is the big bad in the DC Universe, man. And he is treated with the respect he deserves here in Justice League Heroes, going as far as to banish the entire roster of heroes to an abandoned nowhere land and convert the entire planet into a new apocalypse. Our heroes make their way back and rescue Superman, who Darkseid kept trapped because he was too big of a risk to send away, and that's when this shit really hits the fan. Superman is pissed, the entire Justice League is like, Clark, chill, we need a plan, and Clark is like, then make one, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of Darkseid. And in short, he does. The League teams up, Darkseid is defeated, and the Earth is reverted back to normal. Come on, dude. Now with any action RPG, in my opinion, it's totally fair to wonder if the game is going to get boring over time, if it's going to get too repetitive. When the entire concept is fight, smash, level up, fight, smash, level up, I think it's perfectly fair to be skeptical. Who wants to spend their hard earned money on something that's going to get boring? So does Justice League Heroes pack in enough variety to keep things feeling fresh across its full runtime? For me, yes. But I'm going to be very fair in noting, once again, I'm a big DC fan, and that makes a huge difference. If this were a Marvel game or a Harry Potter game or something, I straight up would not be nearly as interested. 
I know who the hell Gorilla Grodd is. I know who Brainiac is. So I want to finish their level to fight them. I love the Flash and Batman. So obviously I'm going to pop when a level lets me team them up. If you don't care about DC Comics or its characters, you're not going to feel the same. Justice League Heroes is not a long game, the story mode can be finished in about 6 hours, and like all action RPGs, repeated runs on higher difficulties is the carrot dangled at the end of the stick. The levels all revolve around defeating enemies and smashing up the environment, sure, and there is variety served up in the shape of some totally different looking stages, and there are some flying levels mixed in as well. Way late in the game, Superman and Wonder Woman literally rocket into space to take out a ship that is covered in cannons and force fields, and this is awesome. Outside of these though, there is a lot of sameness. Sameness that's mashed with the chance of playing these similar feeling stages with new teams of heroes. Like I said, the game isn't long, and I think that's one of its major strengths. Stretching this thing out to 10 or 12 hours would have been way too much. I've been talking about the PlayStation 2 and Xbox version of the game this entire time, by the way. But Justice League Heroes was also released on the PSP and Nintendo DS. The PSP version is practically identical to the home console iteration, and actually features a few exclusive characters, notably Supergirl. The DS port is totally different, pretty much unrecognizable from the others. I've never played it, so I can't offer much personal experience here. Over on the Game Boy Advance, we got Justice League Heroes The Flash, another completely unique game, this time focusing on the adventures of the titular character. Again, never played it, but it looks fun. And hey, this is The Flash's only video game. Can you believe that? Justice League Heroes reviewed pretty well upon release. These aren't the scores we've been seeing in my History of God of War series or anything, but respectable nonetheless. Sales wise, I'm not gonna lie to you, I really have no idea how this game performed at retail. And that might not be a great sign. I'm sure if publisher Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment had a number they wanted to brag about, they would've. And I'd have access to that information. But, I don't. So. Draw your own conclusions on that one. I created this thumbnail posing a question to those of you who remember this game. Those of you who played it back in the day or have even played it more recently. Doesn't matter. I genuinely loved coming back to this one and playing it all the way through for the first time. I'd started and stopped before, but this was my first time seeing it all the way through. Dude, walking the scorched earth after Darkseid transforms the planet, I was loving it. My podcast co-host was obsessed with Marvel Heroes about five or six years ago. He loved that game to death. It was basically Marvel Comics meets Diablo. I was so jealous. I was like, why man? Why is there no DC version of this for somebody like me? And you know what? There was, on the PS2. Justice League Heroes, the game I'd picked up off the shelf but never left the store with. This was that game I'd been looking for, hidden in plain sight, right under my nose, the entire time. Now would I kill for a game like this to drop today? An updated version with a better loot system, new graphics and trophies and all that? Hell yeah I would. But, all the same, the original still feels good, it still holds up, and hey, it's not expensive. Head to your local used game shop, jump on eBay, grab a copy of Justice League Heroes. Or don't. I'm not your boss. If you don't want to play it, don't. What I am saying is this. Justice League Heroes is an awesome experience for a DC fan. And with shit like this clogging up the video game realm for DC fans, I'll take Justice League Heroes any day of the week. And you know what's really cool? Snowblind Studios no longer exists. The team was merged into Monolith Productions in 2012. Now we don't really have anything to go by other than a title, but Monolith Productions are hard at work on their upcoming game, Wonder Woman. This will be the first video game Wonder Woman has ever had. And coming from the team that gave us Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War, I got high hopes. It's also worth noting that we nearly did have a successor to Justice League Heroes, as the now defunct Double Helix were indeed creating a Justice League game for the PS3, 360, and even the Wii some years back. Unfortunately, it was cancelled, never saw the light of day, so that sucks. But hey, no more of this, please. Let's bring in a brighter, 
better era. Here's to the future of DC Comics video games. Well, there it is. That's my retrospective on Justice League Heroes. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I want to let you know I have a number of high-profile retrospectives for you guys coming right around the corner, and what the hell? Let's announce the next one right here, right now. So now I gotta jump back in here because I told you at the top what I was promoting was out of date and now I've decided that this video that I announced here, I don't wanna do it anymore. So I am gonna hit you guys with a retrospective on Superman the movie and that's going to release Friday, December 2nd right here on youtube.com slash 616 entertainment. How's that sound? Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video and want to see more like it and you want to help just keep this channel alive, consider supporting me over on patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. I'm a one man crew. I do all this stuff myself. Thanks for being here today, guys. Until next time, I love ya and I will see you soon.